Alright, so I've been meaning to do a video of my setup for you know, probably a year and a half now. Um, so finally I'm getting around to doing it. It's changed a little bit, I think for the better. So maybe it's good that I waited until now. Um, and I am considering uh, redoing some stuff in the future. I want to add another camera to my bike. Probably another action cam like this one. Um, but we'll see. I might go with a GoPro. I'm not 100% sure yet. And I want to add... Uh, next year, or this this year, I want to do bike audio, not just me yapping along and talking. Um, I want to do audio on the bike, and I think that'll be a lot more entertaining for things like the twisties, and then save the talking for the straights, so I can go back and forth between the two audios and the two video streams, because I'll put the other camera on the bars, or maybe mounted low by like a foot peg, so that you can get really cool, you know, when I'm leaning into a turn, you can get a cool shot, and that kind of stuff, because the helmet... When you're, you know, when you're looking through the turn on the bike, you're uh, straightening the helmet out a little bit so you don't get that cool leaning off the camera. Um, so, I think that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, for now, what I've used, basically, it's about the same as what I've used for the last year and a half. Um, or year that I've had the, I actually, yeah, like a year I've had the camera. Is basically what I have is the Sony uh, Action Cam. It's a the AS10. I got it used. Um... Or refurbished actually I don't really know why I was feeling extra cheap I mean it was like 20 bucks less and I got it refurbished I honestly don't even know why but uh, that's what I did and it, crap. And it works uh, wonderful I like it you obviously know what it looks like um, from my videos so I won't I don't have to explain that but uh, what I wound up having to do with it because you can't get the microphone into the case because the the microphone ports in the bottom of the waterproof housing and there's no spot for it, you have to drill a hole through the case, so I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so what we got going on here is we have the microphone input on the bottom of the camera, which is right there, and then that, so the microphone is connecting into that spot, and then that goes through the hole in the case, and that, uh, that 3.5 millimeter jack goes through the hole I drilled in the case right there. And then obviously uh, it's you know kind of ghetto, um, and it doesn't really work perfectly in that you have to have a 3.5 millimeter jack end that's very very small. Like this this one's from iPod older iPod headphones, and it's seen better days. It's getting to a point where I've had to tape it, and it's all it's really screwed up. I need to get another set of headphones and chop them up. I just don't have any, and I haven't gotten around to buying any or finding any because they don't make them anymore like that. But uh, this is split off to a 3.5 millimeter female end. So what I do with that is um, I can then plug in a small, or have this small plug to fit into the camera. And then I have the, on my helmet, I have the big, you know, regular size plug from the microphone. That then plugs into that female adapter. Well, you know, into there, and then that way I can run it to the camera. Um, the reason that I did that instead of just well, originally, originally I had this end. I had this end on the end of the microphone, so that was basically just this piece instead of that microphone end. Um, the reason I stopped doing that was because I. Oh yeah, okay, because I wanted to run, I wanted to be able to run other microphones to the camera, um, not just the one microphone I set up for the helmet, so uh, I had to modify that to, to this system, that's why I now have it so that it hooks into here. So basically, I'm going to put this back, I'm going to connect this back to the camera and show you how the camera hooks up to the helmet, and I'll show you the routing in the helmet. Another thing that's kind of annoying me is that this is very heavy compared to the, you know, and it's all hanging off that very little wire. So what I've been, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find a way to tape this to the case and still have it be nice and secure and then I can still unplug it and plug it back in. It's really ghetto. I, I don't, that's the one thing I don't like about this camera is they don't really have a good mount for the side of a helmet. Um, that still lets you use the microphone. They have a good mount, but you can't use the microphone. Um, really, none of the brands have too good of a way of using the microphone, but I would say the GoPros are better if you're going to run external audio. Um, I think they have a USB adapter to 3.5mm that makes it easier. Um, 
and then they have a skeleton case that's still like kind of waterproof on the front sort of water resistant and then protects the lens and then i think the back of their skeleton case is open and then you can run the wire through there i didn't buy a gopro for price reasons and low light this camera has better low light and because i'm on a harley so it's a little bit more vibration i wanted the uh the uh, steady shot that this provides um which it does very well. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to have this attached somehow so it's not flapping in the wind, and then that'll make everything a lot better. So what I did here was, oh, well, I guess I should back up for a minute. This gray piece is a metal bracket that is uh, it's just a piece of, uh, I don't know, point in 16 inch steel probably, it's just sheet metal that I bent. So I bent a piece of sheet metal, just put electrical tape around it, but it's being held on by 3M double-sided tape it's extreme duty tape it, it's not coming off I, i've tried to pull that off just for the hell of it and it, i bend the metal before i pull it off it's insane it's not falling off and uh, these are actually on with the 3m double-sided tape as well these have their own sticky pads but i wasn't sure if i wanted to trust them i knew the 3m tape was really really good and I, these are 3m also and they're really really good stickiness wise and i wound up just trusting them on the helmet side because they're just stuck right on and they've never absolutely never had a problem so they're fine. I just, when I first did this, I didn't trust it, so I did it that way. But And I would fix it, but it works great, so why mess with something that isn't broke? And then I have this lanyard for uh, that attaches to the helmet strap, so in case all else fails and the helmet does fall off, it's just going to rock and slap me in the face and hurt me. So <laughs> it won't destroy my camera. So that's good. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to attach that. So the camera goes on like that. It attaches to the... Uh, to the 3M, the 3M dual lock, it's called. They attach together. If you notice, not all the little, you know, thread, the little uh, locks are all in place with each other because of the contour of the helmet and because I put it on quickly. But um, I've never found that to be a problem. This camera has never even remotely tried to fall off. I think with one of those little pads, one of those little one inch by one inch pads, you could probably run it, you know, up to 120, 30, 40 miles an hour. I've only had this up to 110, um, you know, ish. But. It's fine. It's not going anywhere. I can guarantee you that. I mean, I can pick up the helmet and just... All right, of course it fell off then, but <laughs> um, usually I can do that. And I can pick up the helmet from the camera, and it doesn't even try to fall off. If I twist it, it'll start to kind of come off, but it's it's plenty strong. So then I have a little bit of slack here that I wouldn't normally have, but I just... I had reset this microphone up, and I haven't ridden with it yet, so I never fixed it, but um, then I plug the the you know, male 3.5 millimeter into the, the, uh, you know, I have all these lights on me right now, and I still, you still can't see anything, but anyway, so I plugged the, uh, this 3.5 millimeter into the, into the, the female one that goes into the camera, and, uh, it, like I said, it mounts with the dual lock, and then if you turn it on your side, you can see kind of what it looks like, because the camera slopes in, or because the helmet slopes in, the camera, that's why I had to have the bracket. Actually, for the first, for the couple first videos I made, I just had the camera stuck onto the helmet, like at an angle, and you can see it. It's, it was at an angle. It wasn't terrible, but it just everything felt sideways, and I didn't like it. So I made the bracket to kick the to uh, kick the camera out. And if you'll notice, because of the way the camera, because of the way the helmet sits on your head, the camera looks like it's really, really pitched up, but your your helmet doesn't sit flat on your head. So that's where the camera needs to be. Um, you know, at least somewhere relative to that. And then, like I said, this, this lanyard attaches to the helmet strap. That's kind of self-explanatory. Um, and then that produces video. Hang on. I might not have an SD card in this. Otherwise, I'll... Yeah, I don't have an SD card in it. But if I had an SD card in it, I could show you a video from there. But it's not very, uh... It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you've seen my videos. Um, and then that's the setup for that. It works great. I mean, I've ridden 10,000, well, I wouldn't say I rode all the miles with the camera on, but a solid, you know, definitely seven, eight thousand 8,000 miles with the camera on in this way. Um, and it hasn't given me any problems. Um, like I said, it's a little ghetto. I had to do a lot of engineering to uh, make it work. Was it worth it? over buying a GoPro and then mounting it in the chin plate or on top. Maybe, I don't know. I like it. It was cheap. It, uh, the, the, I like the side view personally. Um, because I think top is too high. It makes it look like you're standing on the bike. I don't like that. The whole chin thing I think is cool. Um, 
and would probably be my favorite method, but I'm not sure about waiting on your neck. Like, it would, if it would want to pull your head forward, I find that that might be kind of annoying, but maybe it would actually help balance you and that the wind would push your head back. I don't know. Never really thought about it that way, but uh, that'd probably be the other location I'd put it on. If I had a GoPro, I'd probably put it right on the front of the helmet. Um, and I might buy a GoPro. I might not buy another action camera, and then so I might then use the GoPro as my helmet mounted camera and use this as my bike mounted camera. I honestly don't know. I haven't really thought this stuff through yet. I'm just kind of considering it as the weather's starting to finally get a little bit warmer and it's starting to become more relevant. I'm uh, considering what I might do. And I mean, I might not buy anything. I might just use this camera and keep using it and being happy with it. But I do need to adjust this out a little bit because you do see some of the side of the helmet. You, you know, and it blocks a pretty good amount of the image. So I'd like to get that out of the way. And then I can, my videos will be a little bit more, um, you know, you'll see more stuff instead of just the side of the helmet. Oh, the microphone. Okay. So, um, the way I have the microphone mounted here is, uh, it's right on the cheek pad. It looks kind of weird, but what I did was I put electrical tape over it because I was noticing in heavy rains, your cheek pads do get a little bit wet and I didn't want to, uh, destroy the microphone. Um. I mean, they're not expensive microphones. The microphone I'm using, they're, they're on Amazon. I could actually put post a link in the video if I get ambitious, but they're, uh, they were like $5 for 10 of them, and they work pretty good. Because I'm running drag pipes on my bike, and it's really, really loud. microphone's not this setup is not quite enough for what i have it's great if you have a quiet bike or a sport bike because even sport bikes don't really ever get as loud as a harley i think um at least not the the tones that kind of screw up your audio but uh god it's just so dark hang on all right that's a little better the led is destroying things but regardless you have uh and then that's where the microphone's mounted so uh it's just kind of stuffed in the electrical tape, like I said, is for the rain. Um, the electrical tape is so the, uh, the the rain doesn't get it wet, and uh, it just kind of sits there, chills there. I can, I just snap that bottom snap, and it doesn't really move. It does, I don't really feel it. If I'm going like four or five hundred miles, I might start to kind of be like, oh, there's something poking in my cheek, but it's not a big enough deal for me to even worry about it. I do want to do something with the microphone this year. I'm not sure what yet, but I kind of want to get a mic that mounts here and then uh, extends out to the front of my mouth, kind of like a pilot. I think that would sound a lot better for talking. And then the other mic I'll use for bike sounds, so I can have a mic purely dedicated for talking and purely dedicated to, to bike sounds. Whereas right now, this mic kind of has to do both catching the sound of my bike and talking. So it's a little bit more dual purpose and not quite as dual function, or uh, not quite as specifically functional for each thing. I have yet to find a good mic for the to mount like that, but... I'll see what I can find. Um, but anyway, that's my setup. This is Oh, and this is an a HJC IS Max, in case you want to know about the helmet. It's uh, three, well, going on four riding seasons old now. And it served me well. That's actually not scratches. That's salt from when I was riding. Uh, you know, that's what happens when you ride in February. <laughs> you get salt on things. But anyway, it's... Uh, it's a good helmet, actually. I put the electrical tape on the top just for sun purposes. I, I ride, unfortunately, into the sun and then into the sun both directions of my commute. So it helps with the sun a little bit. Not, not, not Nothing crazy. Um, it's a good helmet. I love the modular. The, the shield's nice. Um, it hasn't gotten too scratched for the amount of crap I put it through. Um, the ventilation's all right. I mean, it's a little bit hot, but, I mean, any helmet is. It's a full-face helmet. When, I was, when I'm riding in North Carolina... When I'm down south in like North Carolina and stuff, that's when I really notice it. If I rode down there more often in that high humidity, I honestly probably wouldn't even wear a full face. But for New York, it's fine. For anywhere under 100, you're basically fine. When you start to touch the hundreds, that's where it's a pain in the ass. But it has the sun shield, which is cool. I love that. I use that all the time. I think it makes riding a lot safer, actually. And uh, that's about it. I mean, I can... Uh, answer any questions anyone has but that's my setup nothing too fancy it cost me about 160 bucks total um with the sd card and everything that's like you know ready to rock and roll because i like i said i bought it uh re reconditioned whatever so but uh yeah that's it
I would also like to point something out. This is the cup holder from my uh, Explorer, and I had put a mount in here um, to, and I had it mounted to a tripod pole, and I was going to just leave the mount in there and then screw it on, screw the pole from there, which worked, but then I accidentally broke it because I hit it with my elbow, so I realized the location was bad. And trying to get the mount out now, I literally have attached a piece of 550 paracord to it, and I'm trying to pull it out, and it's it's the tape is so stuck that I can't even do that. And I'm going to have to uh, heat it up and then try to do that. So I just want to point out that anybody who's a naysayer about this tape, um, it, it holds. <laughs> it holds very, very well. Finally got it off after a couple of minutes using the blow dryer. You can see, though, that uh, the tape is kind of funny looking. And a little bit of it stayed behind. So uh, it was on there, for sure.